On today's episode of Identity, Alicia Singh helps give some insight into the Buddhist philosophy. Our guest presenters showcase the Rastafarian and Hare Krishna beliefs. In our What's Happening segment, we feature a Zion music group and we play out with the sounds of the Apostolic Church of Christ Choir. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Good morning, Mzansi, and welcome to the final episode of the second series of Identity. I'm your host, Mbumi Mbete. It's been a thrilling roller coaster ride over the past 38 weeks, and as we wrap up this series, today's episode is sure to get your week off to an inspired start. With that in mind, the Identity team thought it fitting to dedicate this episode to showcasing four spiritual groups that have not had much airplay on the show. Umangabe unesfiso segwatiga banding ema Buddhist, ma Rasta, ma Zioni ne balanzeli bengolo ya Hare Krishna. Did follow the webnats? How we clafuna unetse tege utfogotele lselo loetu. Let's meet today's guest. young woman joining me today describes herself as a protagonist of peace and a liberator from procrastination. Well, with a description like that, I think it's safe to say she chose the perfect career and this is definitely in line with the ways and values of the Buddhist philosophy which she practices. Alicia Singh is an attorney of the High Court of South Africa, specializing in family law, litigation, property law and mediation amongst others. This Wirtz University graduate is also passionate about human rights. More also when it comes to legal issues involving children and I'm excited to find out more about her career, passion and spirituality. Alicia, welcome to Identity. Thank you. I was very fascinated by protagonist of peace. Explain to me what that means. A protagonist of peace meaning someone who is in favor of peace, someone who always fights for peace and not against it. Now you're also a liberator of procrastination. I'm a big procrastinator. Liberate me. No, you can liberate yourself actually. Wow. So how you do this is by meditating. So meditation is not unique to Buddhism. It's also, ironically, it's also um, part of many faiths, but um, the one I use is part of Buddhism. So uh, meditation in its own right can help you um, procrast uh, liberate yourself from procrastination because it enables you to become more proactive than reactive, which is what many people are in today's society. Many people are reactive more mm -hmm. than proactive. So um, that is how you liberate yourself from procrastination. And have you always been a follower of Buddhism? I was very interested in Reiki, so then I became a Reiki healer. Then about four years ago, I was um, introduced to the Mahayana school of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And I, I attended that school for about, um, I think about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I then attended the Diamond Way Buddhism group which is the Kamakaji group, and that is part of the Vajrapani school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three different types of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. There's the Mahayana school, there's the Vajrapani school, and there's the Theravada school. So that's how I became part of Buddhism. You're also an attorney. Now, yes. Alicia, um, in your field of work, you come across pre people of different cultures and faiths and beliefs. How does Buddhism help you, or how does your, your faith then help you in interacting with people from multiple faiths? One of the most important things that you ought to do is you have to accept that every single individual that you come across is a Buddha themselves. Mm -hmm. My nature is the kind of person where I'm very good at sitting on the fence. Okay. and seeing two different sides of the story. So that is why I'm very okay with, with um, seeing, well, starting to see a person as a Buddha. So um, I'm, because I meditate, mm -hmm. I'm able to clear my mind, see myself as the Buddha that I, I can potentially be. Mm -hmm. So you liberate yourself from, the, from all the, what we call, we call them um, disturbing emotions. Mm -hmm. When you clear your mind from from those disturbing emotions. Mm -hmm. You can then see or see every single person, including yourself, as this Buddha. And that is what we all try and achieve. And that stage is called enlightenment. Mm 
Mm. Now, we can't talk about Buddhism without mentioning um, the Noble Four Truths. Take me through that. The Four Truths, that is the very first teaching, and there's 84,000 teachings that Buddha gave to us, and every school teaches them. It's just how you learn them is different. The first teaching is that suffering exists. Mm -hmm. The second one is that um, suffering has a cause, and that is where karma comes into it. The third one is that suffering has an end. And the fourth one is that there is a way to end suffering. Now, Alicia, would you say that spirituality is important for young people in this day and age, fast, techno-paced world that we live in? Absolutely. And I must tell you that um, if I hadn't found spirituality, I don't think I'd be the same person that I am today. Mm. Um, a lot of young people, especially ones that I've come across um, in my own field. I mean, I've represented children in court myself. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are looking for, are looking to identify with something that proves itself. Mm. Our teacher, his name is um, Lama Ole. Mm. He is a very good example of um, enlightenment because he is someone who teaches all ways of how to reach enlightenment, mm -hmm. but it hasn't, doesn't just teach them. He is an example of where you can be. So young people respond to actions more than words. In 2010, you became a member of the Golden Key International Honorary Society. What does that mean? The Golden Key is a society which, rec which is recognized for people who have um, made achievements in their studies. Mm. Uh, I was part of the Dean's List at the University of Witzvaderstrand and then for 2010 and 2011. Oh no, sorry, 20, 2009 and 2010. So because of my achievements, they offered me a position. So you don't apply, they offer you mm. a position at the Golden Key. All right, let's play this word game. It's called Would You Rather. You need to answer it as quickly as possible. Oh boy. <laughs> Would you rather go way back in time and meet your ancestors or go way into the future and meet your grandchildren? Way into the future. Have a rewind button or have a pause button in your life? Pause button. Would you rather listen to Hakuna Matata from Simba or A Whole New World from Aladdin? A Whole New World. Have your mind serve as an iPod so you can listen to music anytime or be able to watch your dreams on the television. iPod. <laughs> be overdressed or underdressed for an event? Underdressed. Would you rather be fluent in all languages or be a master of every musical instrument? Oh, music. Watch a movie without audio and subtitles or listen to a movie without the picture? watch a movie without subtitles. Awesome. Alicia, it's been such a pleasure to have you here and thank you for coming to Identity today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Nema via Buddha, one moment can change a day, one day can change a life and one life can change the world. We wish Alicia nothing but success as she continues to contribute towards changing our world. Let's take a quick break, after which we bring you today's Encounters insert with a twist. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back to Identity, the show that adds an element of spiritual swag to your Sunday. I'm Bumi Mbete. Thank you for staying tuned. In case you've just joined us, we're celebrating the end of the second series of Identity. And in doing so, we've dedicated the show to Buddhism, Rastafari, Zion and Hare Krishna devotees. Now it's time for our Encounters insert. We received a Facebook message from two of our viewers who wanted to give Identity viewers a glimpse into some elements that make up their faith. Here is their message. Hello Identity team, my name is Zolani Mashangu, but my Rastafarian name is Selecta Ja Youth. I am part of a Rastafarian community in Johannesburg and I'd like to invite you to my hood to show you some of the things that we as a Rastafarian community consider very important to our spirituality. But that's not all. Since we live in a rainbow nation, I've asked my friend Sokana Mavume, who is a Hare Krishna devotee, to give you some insight into her faith. We would really like to share this with the Identity viewers and we hope to hear from you soon. The identity team was very intrigued by this message and so off we went to Johannesburg and then to Pretoria to join Zolani and Sokana for this interesting story. Take a look. 
This is my identity. Holy Manuel I, Silas I, Ja, Rastafari. Yes, this is Selector Ja Youth. We are live and direct in Johannesburg to come and interview some local Rasta brethren who are doing art and culture, agriculture and clothing works and also who do dreadlocks. So today I'm your guest host and it's an honor and a privilege to host you as the identity crew. Blessed love, Silas I lives. Yes, we are live and direct in Grill Wall in the Green Office, a place founded by Ja Menzi. Yes, Ja Menzi, we'd like to know what inspired the man to create such a beautiful environment. The inspiration uh, to turn uh, this place into what it is, yes. uh, I can say it came from one's conviction of yes. uh, what needs to be done uh, in this time and now. The Drill Hall has a lot of history uh, concerning Johannesburg. It used to be a native prison where the native prisoners used to be held and used to be tortured. Blessed love once again to the viewers at home. We are live and direct in GP Street at one of the local Rastaman shops. As you can see, a coconut was turned into a portable bag. And as you know, Motherland is a beautiful place where all people love to be. So we come and embrace where we come from and what we stand for through art. We also have got shoes, which mostly can be uh, preferred for when you go to Sabbath and observe the day of rest. There's a lot of things that the Rasta community can produce out of their hand and their skills. So my Lord, if I may ask Majesty, you know, what is the true significant, you know, for man to wear Teban, you know, as a as a Rasta man, you know. Yeah man. For I and I it was a teaching that was given uh, by Charles Soda Priest Emmanuel. Uh, it did make I and I to understand that uh, it was the ancient order that was being used in the ancient time by the ancient Israelites, uh, which was taught by uh, Moses himself. So I and I in this modern time it's a, it's actually part of the Nazarene vow to I and I so we cover I and I self just to make sure that our head they don't get exposed to many things which I cannot even count most of them. Yeah man. Well now this is another stall that sells some of Rastaman garments for a lot of uh, ceremonies and events such as the coronation which is on the 2nd of November. Yes, people of identity, it was a blessing to have you today with us live and direct in Jersey with the Rasta community. Until we meet, blessed love, Selassie I, Ja Rastafari. Hare Krishna everyone, my name is Sokana and welcome to Iskan Pretoria. Uh, you guys visited my friend earlier, Selector Jai Youth. Uh, he was telling you guys about Rastafarianism. Well, I'm going to tell you a bit more about our version of etiquette and our culture. So you can follow me as we go into the journey. Krishnamata, so tell me, what does um, your outfit mean and what does the, the, the red dot on your forehead mean? Okay, I will start with my red dot. This is the sign that I'm married. And then this is the Gopi outfit. It's from the sari, originally. You just, uh, it's a skirt and the top and there's a shoulder on top. Is there any specific way that married women should, should dress like or is it any other normal way than every other person who's here at the temple? Yeah, you just have to cover your body with the outfit so that they don't see there was a part. It's only for your husband. 
Now we are joined by Prabhu Kakiso, and he will speak more about neck beads as well as the cloth that he is wearing. So Kakiso, tell me, what do the neck beads symbolize? Amanic beads, they are made from Tulsi. And Tulsi is a plant. The plant is a worship like temple. And then, like, many, many years when the Lord used to appear, he once appeared in that form of Tulsi. Amanic beads are represented in our society. Thank you. So now, can you speak about Itoti, Lenwe Kokil? Itoti, a white. Yeah, represent Okay, you can still marry, you can still get married and stuff. Yeah, but then we do have another orange toti that is used by the brahmacharis. You are the perfect person who has a different kind of dhoti and with different clothing color. So can you speak more about why you are dressed in orange? Um, like just like the white cloth or any other cloth. This is uh, representing um, a different level of study as a student of bhakti. So this is saying that uh, I'm a full-time student. This is all I do. I'm dedicated to bhakti, meditation, reading the scriptures and teaching. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I hope you guys had a better insight as to how we as Hare Krishnas dress and hopefully next time you see us, you won't think we're these weird people who are just dressing because we want to. They all have a significance and I hope you enjoyed the show. Bye, Hare Krishna. Thank you to Selector Jayut Nasokana Mavume for writing in and allowing our team to spend time learning about their spirituality. As a pinza si chige editolo, umas buya sigle tela in what's happening segment le sugile. Si funza ngem tulo wengolo ye mazion, unga inzao. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back to Identity right here on Mzansi for Show with me, Mbumimbete. As we mentioned earlier, it's the last episode of the second series of Identity and it's been an extra special episode so far. We started off the show with an interesting discussion on law and spirituality with Buddhist Alicia Singh. Our Encounters insert featured the lifestyles of Rastafari and Hare Krishna devotees. Now it's time for our What's Happening segment. I'm sure by now you've noticed that today's episode has a twist to it. So of course our What's Happening segment had to follow suit. When it comes to traditional religious and spiritual music in South Africa, you cannot make a list without mentioning Zion music. The rousing vocals and rhythmic flow of their movement has been mesmerizing congregations and audiences for years. We're Apostolic Church of Christ Choir. Puti. Yeah, I So, Kukwe <laughs> 
I'm a Twitter says I own. I'm a tea in a bakitar, la elda, and is in the house. My instrument, my instrument. Tina Sabin's Iona look to see food. In green and white, Labanyo blue and white, Mastella and Lettimbatal to it. Yeah, Lapoga at Batlen, we should see Isson for the son for Gubana Mapa. Lely son for Laban, Lely, Lison for Lelin Janabo. A Korean is in a jam as I only as now much wish. Seven is a low goody every Sunday, Master Sondu in his score alone, Sisuan is taken away. Yet depend on some seventy more below or as go. Good to say a fan of a song and a melis book and see what she food. Put Andy Lisbonga cool with Ube Nancy Lago identities, those Chelaga banding him to Lue Mazion. I is born a cool Nazis who back on a lagrens are. Yeah, Nput Andile Loyos Monga Kulu for taking the time to share some of these interesting facts about Zion music. This has certainly been an eye opening discussion for me. The Apostolic Church of Christ Choir Group will play us out in just a moment. Next Sunday, the 16th of November, the world celebrates Mitzvah Day, a Jewish-led annual day for social change. This is a day set aside to reduce hardship and poverty, as well as to help our environment and bring a little joy wherever it may be needed. All you have to do is give off your time by visiting the elderly, those in need or the sick, or by simply cleaning up your community. So go out there and make a difference in the lives of those around you this Mitzvah Day. Visit www.mitzvah.com day.org.uk for more information. That brings us to the end of today's episode as well as the end of this series of Identity. We'll be back on your screen soon so be on the lookout for a fresh new series of your favorite multi-faith youth show. We hope that you have been inspired by every single guest, insert and media review segment that we have shared with you over the past 39 weeks. Thank you for taking 30 minutes out of your Sunday each week to spend time with the Identity team. We appreciate it. Get Pages Facebook, Twitter, Ganyin, and Instagram. Ngasitumelani email go identity tv show at gmail.com. The Apostolic Church of Christ Choir is standing by to usher us out. From me, Mbumimbete, and the identity team, goodbye and God bless.